uh, any time there have been um, real bursts of speculation in the market, you know that it, it does get corrected eventually. Ben Graham was right when he said that in the in the in the short run it's a voting machine, in the long run it's a weighing machine. Sooner or later, the amount of cash that a business can disgorge in the future governs the value it has uh, that the stock commands in the market. But it can take a long time. And um, I mean, it's a very interesting proposition. For example, if you take a company that in the end never makes any money, but the trade changes hands representing a valuation of 10 or 20 billion dollars uh, for some time, uh, there's no wealth created. There's a tremendous amount of wealth transferred. So that right there is Warren Buffett at the 2000 annual Berkshire Hathaway conference. That's right, the year 2000. That is 20 plus years ago from the time of me recording this video. And it is a rather remarkable clip because he is talking about the dot-com bubble, the greatest tech bubble essentially in modern markets. If you're not familiar with it, I've got videos on my YouTube channel about it. I've also got articles on my website about it. Check those out. But I want to talk about why this is so important, what he just said, and it is essential to essentially why I even started my YouTube channel. Now, he talks about there's not a whole lot of wealth created, but there's a lot of wealth transferred. So let me just say that again. There's not a whole lot of wealth created in these bubbles, but there's a lot of wealth transferred. What does he mean by that? That is one of the most important things to understand as an investor or even a trader, because at the end of the day, every investment and every trade requires two people. There are two people, a buyer and a seller. And when people are buying things that don't actually have an intrinsic value, meaning they will never return money to the investors, they will never actually become anything. They are just a fake shell you know, company that's never actually going to pan out to deliver the promises it has said it would. That means the money is leaving the investors' bank accounts and the investor wallets, going to a company that is essentially just a big scam, and those investors will never see their money again. But the people who are at the company who have tricked everyone or marketed their company in such a way to convince them now have exchanged their worthless shares for all of this money. And this is why Warren Buffett calls it a wealth transfer. And it's remarkable at how calm he is to look back at this and see that. And you're actually going to see in a few minutes here what Munger says about this. And it does demonstrate why they were such fantastic business partners. One gentleman, Buffett, calm and collect. He's essentially just calling this a pump and dump, a huge scam. It's a wealth transfer. It's the dot-com bubble. By the way, the market hasn't even crashed yet at this time, so kudos to Buffett for even calling it like it is in the year 2000 before the crash really started in, and panned out in 2001. But essentially, this is a must for all investors. Do not be on the wrong side of the wealth transfer. If you're going to invest or trade, and remember, you are exchanging the money in your bank account for shares, your name, your bank account, the money you worked hard for. Even if you're trading something and only hold it for three days, you're still making a transfer that has a lot to do with what you've accomplished you know, in your time to even get that money into your account, to have your name and then get those shares over to you. You know, you are buying a business ultimately. It's it's it still needs to do something to actually have the promise of ever returning that money. All right, let me click play because this only gets better. Listen closely. Uh, and I think you will see when we look back on this era, you will see this as a period of enormous amounts of wealth transfer. But in the end, the only wealth creation comes about through what the business creates. There's no there's no magic to it. Uh, if, if, if a company that's not worth anything sells for $20 billion and 5% of it changes hands, somebody takes a billion dollars from somebody else. But investors as a whole gain nothing. They all feel richer. It's a, it's a very interesting phenomenon. But, but they can't be richer except as a group unless the company makes them richer. And it, it's the same principle as a chain letter. I mean, a, a, 
if you're very early on a chain letter, you can make money. There's no money created by chain letters. In fact, there's the frictional cost of envelopes and postage and that sort of thing. So the net, there's some money destroyed a little bit. And there's money destroyed by the frictional costs of trading and investing. That, that comes out of investors' pockets. But the, uh, uh, the manias that periodically take pay place, and not just in, just, not just in stocks. Uh, we had a similar mania. Well, I'm not necessarily similar. We, we certainly had a mania in, in farmland here in Nebraska uh, 20 years ago, and land which uh, couldn't produce, we'll say, more than 70 or 80 dollars an acre would sell for 2,000 an acre at times when interest rates were 10 percent. Well, that that math will kill you, and it killed the people who bought it at those prices, and it killed a great many banks here in Nebraska who lent based on that sort of thing. But while it was going on, everybody thought it was wonderful because every farm was selling for more than the similar farm had sold for a month earlier. And it was momentum investing in farmland. Uh, and in the end, uh, valuation does, does count, but it can go on a long time. And when you, get a, when you get a huge number of participants playing with ever increasing sums, you know, it creates its own apparent truth for a, can be for a very considerable period of time. It doesn't go on forever. And, and whether, it, whether it has fallout to the whole economy, like it probably did in the, in the late 20s, or whether it's just an isolated industry where the, or, or sector where the bubble bursts and it really doesn't affect other values, uh, who knows. Uh, uh, but five or 10 years from now, you will know. Charlie? So before Charlie gets to his epic upcoming comments, let me just quickly comment on what Buffett did say there that I think is rather fascinating. Number one, he does talk about also the destruction of wealth just simply through transferring of the transfer of wealth, meaning there are going to be brokerages involved, banks involved, there's market makers involved, there's custodians involved. Just by jumping into the mania, you are bringing in all these middlemen, all these other services, and it's just taking different pieces of that money that is being transferred between the two parties. And sure, it's great. I mean, hey, just by trading or investing in stocks in times of mania, you are sort of supporting the economy to some degree because you're creating a job for someone else at some back office job in Wall Street or something of that sort. But I think that's a very important comment to keep in mind as well. You are, just by being an investor and trader in these times, essentially just supporting the financial institutions and the, the, the companies that are just printing cash just by being so active and so involved. So keep that in mind. Every time you invest, every time you trade, especially in these maniacal moments, you know, your money is being cut up into multiple pieces along the the journey. Another aspect that is really important about what he said there is talking about the farmland in Nebraska. Bubbles happen all the time. They happen at the small scale, so he brings up this aspect of Nebraska farmland, and they happen at the large scale, and they've been going on since the dawn of humanity. Go back to the South Sea bubble. Go back to the Dutch tulip bubble. These are moments happening in the 1700s. Several hundred years ago, we can track bubbles all throughout time. They were probably, and there are some evidence of such happening even in the Roman era. And what's happening here is that Human behavior is repeating over time. And if you're going to be an investor, if you're going to be a trader, and you want to be successful at this, you really do need to know history. Because by knowing history, you can then know that this stuff can happen in the future, and it can happen to anyone. You can get sucked into these moments and potentially really, you know, take a loss or two or three. Now, the other and final aspect that I think is very important is that Buffett, once again, is very calm. He makes the aspect of the chainmail reference, which is really just a game of hot potato or a pump and dump, just passing it along until sort of the last person just gets caught with the potato in their hands. They can't sell it, but everyone before them did well. And that is oftentimes what is happening in these sort of maniacal, euphoric moments. It's a pump and dump. Everyone's just chasing it higher. And you do not want to be the last one to that party because by the time you get in and everyone's leaving, you're just going to be empty in a room with nothing to show for. You're holding the proverbial bag. So now here comes Charlie Munger. Well, I think the reason we use the phrase wretched excess is that there are wretched consequences. 
if you mix the mathematics of the chain letter or the Ponzi scheme with some legitimate development like the development of the internet, you are mixing something which is wretched and irrational and has bad consequences with something that uh, has very good consequences. But you know, if you mix raisins with turds, they're still turds. <laughs> um. <laughs> I am going to leave that right there because that is just the wit and wisdom of Charlie Munger. Many of you have probably learned to love Munger. If not, once again, more resources on my website and YouTube channel. He's an inspiration of mine, even more so than Buffett to some degree because his straightforward talking. You know, you have to be a certain person to talk that fearlessly. And I like that he refers to the chain mail reference as a pump and dump scheme. And that sort of just shows the difference between the two. But that's sometimes what happens in these moments. And speaking of this aspect, too, that, you know, mixing a raisins with turd, it's still a turd. Or, for example, the Internet, which is really fantastic. It was just getting started. It's the year 2000. People see email, they see websites, they see the value of this, but then mix it with a lot of the dot-com bubble scams and fake companies and what people were doing to trick investors into believing these lofty dreams. Well, what's happening there is something that will always happen as long as we are in a capital system or exchanging dollars for goods and services, which is people will take advantage of a really good service and they will take advantage of it by creating hype and mania around it. So you can think of the internet back then and the people making companies to capitalize on the internet. Hey, I'm building the next great internet company. Today, there's a lot of chat about AI. You probably will see a lot of fake and ridiculous AI companies come to the market. The same could have been true for a decade ago when the smartphone was coming out. You could think about all of these smartphone companies that were trying to showcase their next great smartphone or their next great app. Now, it's interesting that sometimes these things do take off, like the app economy, but along the way, there will always be a someone or something or company that tries to take advantage of such and ultimately try to be a part of the wealth transfer and get that wealth from people who may not be buying something that is actually going to be a real business an authentic business run by people who really have an you know a goal that is manageable and realistic well into the future so with that being said i love this clip from buffett and munger i hope you enjoyed it too and i'll have much more coming because these specific breakdowns i think are essential for investors and traders especially new investors and traders to learn from the experts the greatest essentially of my generation probably yours as well if you're older than me maybe even younger and yeah hope you hope you learned something and Go ahead and restart it if you want, and I'll also include some resources in the description below so you can learn more.